This is a 10S 3P lithium ion battery. You can see it uses nickel as the series conductor. This is a 13S 4P lithium ion battery. And it uses copper as the series conductor. Copper is used because it has a significantly lower resistance than nickel. That means it has a lower voltage drop and can carry a much higher current. This is a 4P battery for a 30 amp bike, so copper is almost entirely unnecessary for this. But this is just how I build batteries. With this particular battery, I have the copper welded directly onto the cells, with nickel only on the top. But that doesn't have to be the case. You can definitely do nickel welds like this, and do copper on the top, and get the same benefit. And I'm going to prove that in this video. I made this test jig that allows me to swap in and out different metal strips to see what their performance is. You can see how it works. The strip goes in, and this screw presses it down on this copper plate. The copper is wrapped around each one. So let's put in this nickel strip. It's 0.15 millimeters thick. I think it's 7 millimeters wide. And let's see what kind of voltage drop performance it gets. Okay, I'm putting one amp into the strip and it's producing 8.4 millivolts of voltage drop. Now, watch what happens when I increase the current. As you can see, the voltage drop across the strip is linearly proportional to the amount of current that's flowing through it. The reason why it's slowly increasing right now is because we're putting 8 amps through this tiny nickel strip and it's heating up. For most things, as they heat up, their resistance increases. When that happens, it increases the voltage drop across it. It will eventually stabilize or catch on fire. So we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Okay, it's pretty much stabilized. It's been sitting here a minute or two, so check this out. As I touch this and feel the warmth, my body is absorbing some of that heat energy. That's how I can feel it. That means I'm reducing the temperature of that strip. And that's gonna decrease its resistance, which is gonna lower its voltage drop. And that's what we're seeing right there. And now when I release it, it heats back up. So now let's see what the copper strip does. significantly lower voltage drop. So now let's combine them in real time using this other post and see what happens to the voltage drop. It's already making a little bit of a connection there. And there we go. So, what do you think the voltage drop across the nickel is now? As you can see, they are almost the same. The reason why they're practically the same is because the copper and the nickel each have their own millivolts of drop that they will apply for a given amount of current. Because their resistances are different, different amounts of current are going to the two strips. The majority of the current is going through the copper because the copper has the lowest resistance. But a proportional amount of the current is going through the nickel. Anytime you add resistors in parallel, the overall resistance is always going to be lower than either of those things on their own. Some people think that adding a higher resistance material to a lower resistance material that's used as a series conductor either won't give you any benefit or will actually lower performance. But this proves that that is false. Check it out. I'm going to remove the nickel as we monitor the voltage drop across the copper. Removing the nickel. And there we go. We can clearly see that more current is flowing through the copper now because it doesn't have the nickel there to help it. Check it out.
Every material has its own characteristic resistance. The material itself is just one factor. The geometry of the material is a major factor. If you have double the distance, you'll have double the resistance. If you have double the thickness, you'll have half the resistance. And here's the same test with the nickel. So let's say this is a battery with a nickel series conductor, and you add copper to it. Here we have the nickel carrying 100% of the load. You can see it's under great distress, producing 64 millivolts of voltage drop. But if I put this piece of copper in, it dramatically reduces the current burden on the nickel. A proportional amount of current takes the copper path. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've got two tracks here. I've got a perfectly even block on each side. Of course, of course. That same thing wouldn't happen if I put the copper on this side, only touching the nickel, not touching the block at all, right? Well, here it is. The copper's on the left. It's not at all touching this block here. It's only touching the nickel. And what do you know? It just depends on where I put my probes as far as what voltage drop we're getting. I'm not touching the copper. I'm just touching the nickel. I can even measure just the nickel. I'm just on the nickel there. It's kind of acting like a piece of copper, isn't it? And now I know what you're thinking again. Oh, that's just a strip on a test jig. That's not a real battery. It's not the real world. That wouldn't happen on a real battery. Well, here's a real battery. I welded some main connections to it for the test. And I made this test load out of a piece of nichrome wire. And it's sized just right to draw a third of the current of the volts that you give it. So if you give it 10 volts, it'll pull 3.33 amps. If you give it 100 volts, it'll pull 33.33 amps. We're going to give it around 40 volts. Here, check it out. I'm going to be running it in water, but I'll just run it here like this so you can see. It definitely works. That's about 500 watts right there. So I've got the load ready to hook up. And currently, we're not getting any voltage drop, which is what you'd expect with no current flowing. And now I'm going to plug it in. Okay, now we have about 13 amps flowing. And there we go. Now we have voltage drop in the same way that we had on the test jig. I'm going to get slightly different readings because these cells are not perfectly balanced and I'm not touching them at the same exact spot. There's a lot that goes into this. But see, we're getting 8.3 there, 7.5 here, 3.1 there because there's not as much current flowing in this area because there are not cells there. And then 6 there. Now look, see? Let's do it this way. Very little current. It should be no current flowing, but very little current is flowing in that direction, as you would expect. Very little in this direction, but a lot in that direction. And we can move this, and we can see how current flows. And we can even see the direction of the current flow. See? It goes negative. Okay, I have the load disconnected for now, and I'm going to weld on some tabs on either side here so we can monitor that without me having to hold the probes on there. Okay, and here we are. No current is flowing, and let's plug it in. Now current is flowing. So, the battery is under load now, and we have a voltage drop across this series conductor. What do you think is going to happen when I weld this on? I'll give you a sneak peek. I'm just going to press it on. Okay, so let's weld it. I'm going to plug the load in. There it goes.
Oops. And there we go. It's cooling, so its resistance is lowering and its voltage drop is lowering. So let's weld another piece of copper on to see what happens. I'm already down to 0.8 millivolts and this isn't a very expensive meter. So I need to increase the current, which will increase the voltage drop and make it easier to see it when we lower the voltage drop by adding more copper. This nichrome wire has a certain amount of resistance per foot. If I reduce its length, I will lower its resistance, which will cause more current to flow. I think the easiest way to do that is to just short out a few of these coils. I don't know exactly how much this will cause the current to increase, but it will increase it some amount. All right, I pulled four loops together in this nickel. I'm gonna weld over it. That was very difficult, but I think I got it. Okay, the load's back in the water. Let's see what kind of voltage drop we're getting now. Remember, before we were getting 0.8 millivolts. Okay, not much more. That's just one. Okay, I did another one with way more loops. This should pull way more current. Okay, I guess that's enough. Let's weld on another piece of copper and see what happens to that voltage drop. As you can clearly see, there's absolutely no problem adding copper on nickel or copper on copper. Yes, electrons take the path of least resistance and all that, but they don't ignore paths. The current is distributed proportionally. This becomes a composite resistor that has new characteristics that's composed of several different resistances that all exist at different planar heights.